have you ever won a scratch off? Or maybe guess the number of your Mario Party roll before you pressed A? Or maybe even picked the winner of Big Brother correctly in the preseason? That, my friends, is what we call good old fashioned luck. A little luck can be fun, but a lot of luck can be lethal, especially in Big Brother. If luck goes your way week after week, well, you might as well already sign the check because luck is without a doubt one of the biggest determining factors in deciding the winner of the game. This is not to take away from any of the winners of the show, but don't be surprised if you see a lot of winners on this list because that's kind of just how this thing works out. So take a seat, grab your popcorn, and get ready to learn how to win Big Brother. These are the luckiest players in Big Brother history. Have a seat, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Will. To start it off, I have two non-game-related lucky mentions because they are definitely worth the mention. In Big Brother 6, Janelle was so lucky when it came to winning prizes. First, she won the peanut butter and jelly pass from just total random luck. And then next, she won the Netflix, plasma screen TV, and DVD combo by picking the right box randomly in an HOH competition. And then third, during a veto competition, she randomly, luckily picked the correct key to win herself a trip for two to the Bahamas. Go Janelle. I was so mad when I saw Janelle got the plasma screen TV and a membership to Netflix. She wins everything. She's so lucky. I hate her. I the second group of lucky people is everybody that played in the pre-social media era. It must have been a blessing, as you didn't have to worry about the backlash of making game moves, or going against the fan favorites, or being petty, or whatever, because you didn't have thousands of Twitter warriors trying to get you fired from your job at home because they don't like you. Now, onto the actual game-related lucky moments. In Big Brother 3, Marcellus was pretty lucky in the first week that Jerry used the veto on him for seemingly non-game-related purposes. It helped Marcellus to reintegrate himself in the house and helped him get all the way to the final five. I would call that pretty lucky. In Big Brother 5, Drew got lucky that Diane got drunk the night before the final HOH and told him that she had more locked jury votes to win than he did. Had Diane not done this, it's definitely possible, maybe even likely, that Drew would bring Diane to the final two after winning the final HOH and would then lose to Diane in the vote. So had Diane not gotten drunk and said that, Drew might have lost the game. So that's pretty lucky. Diane, you and I had a talk last night and you told me about some things that if you and I were here in the final two that scared me. So at this time, I choose to evict you, Diane. Mm -hmm. In Big Brother 7 during week 6, Janelle got so lucky that the HOH started having technical difficulties after she was eliminated from the competition, as this made it so that the entire comp had to be redone, which Janelle, of course, won. Had the redo not taken place, Janelle almost for sure goes out as the first juror and doesn't become nearly the legend she is today. Those technical difficulties made Janelle a lot of money. In Big Brother 8, Jen got really lucky that the tiebreaker question for the week 2 HOH had a tiny technicality, meaning that Jen, who guessed the lowest number, won the HOH. How many gallons of water does the spinning teacup in the backyard hold? Well, because of the entrance, the Big Brother teacup holds nine gallons of water, which means congratulations, Jen. You are the new head of household. <laughs> also from Big Brother at 8, we have Dick and by extension, Danielle. Obviously, I don't need to describe this to you, but Dick got lucky that there existed a twist to have America basically decide the winner of the season, so when he was portrayed as the dad who just wanted his daughter back, there was no way America was not going to try and help him win, which is exactly what happened. Eric has cast America's vote for Dick to be crowned the winner of Big Brother 8. In Big Brother 10, Dan got lucky that America chose to evict Jesse over Memphis. Having Memphis in the game proved to be integral in Dan's survival, and I'm not so sure that we see Dan as the winner of Big Brother 10 if America chose to save Jesse as opposed to Memphis. If you want a further explanation, go check out this video here where I talk about what could have happened if America voted out Memphis over Jesse. Dan? Hey, Mr. Ch Oops. Uh, how about Miss Julie? I'll meet you thank halfway. Thank you. Right. Thank you. America has voted to evict Jesse. Please go to the living room, Dan. All right. Good job, America. Another big lucky duo here is Jeff and Jordan in Big Brother 11. 
Obviously, the coup d'etat put Jeff and Jordan into a position of power after being on the losing side of the game for the first four weeks at the cost of nothing. They didn't earn it, they were gifted it. Then, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that Jordan's tiebreaker answer during the final HOH was a guess, and an extremely lucky guess at that, seeing as to how she was literally only one number off, and it definitely won her the game. So I'd say both Jeff and Jordan got pretty lucky. Correct answer is 51. Congratulations, Jordan. You're the final head of Elf Summer. In Big Brother 12, Brittany got lucky that production stepped in and said that Brendan was not allowed to nominate her when he was HOH because he blatantly told her that he was going to nominate her instead of using Big Brother speak and saying, I'm thinking about nominating you or something else along those lines. Brittany probably doesn't go home that week anyways, but Brittany got pretty lucky that this is the only time production has ever stepped in for something like this. In Pig Brother 13, Rachel got lucky on a few separate occasions. She got lucky that there was a battle back and that it was teased to the house guest, as this allowed for Lawan to step in and ask to be evicted in a spot where Rachel otherwise would have gone home. Plus, it brought Brendan back into the game, where he then took a bullet for Rachel the following week, where he was evicted in place of her. And then, she, and everybody else, got lucky that during the double eviction, Jeff's clown shoe got thrown out of his container. Because if Jeff won that veto, Rachel goes home, and Jeff becomes incredibly hard to evict from that point on. As for the Pandora's box twist at the final six, I'm actually not gonna bring it up, as I think Rachel still wins the season without it. Lawan, I'm sorry, your game is over. Lawan, please say your goodbyes. I don't have to babysit Rachel anymore. I feel like a big weight has been lifted off my shoulders because she was stressing me out so bad. In Big Brother 14, Frank got insanely lucky that the producers decided to cancel the eviction in week three when the coaches entered the game. Frank was going home otherwise, and instead it allowed Frank to survive for another six rounds, win America's Favorite House Guest, and get invited back for Big Brother 18. But now, come to think of it, maybe it wasn't so lucky for Frank that he came back once more. Also, extremely off topic, but is anyone else just flabbergasted by how much older Frank looked in Big Brother 18 compared to Big Brother 14? Even though it was only four years, that always baffled me. Joe and Frank, neither of you will be evicted tonight. Everyone, head to the backyard because the battle for, for head of household is about to begin. Also, also, we can't talk lucky without talking about Ian in Big Brother 14 as well. Ian likely goes home week one if Boogie doesn't win the coach's comp to protect him. Then Ian gets lucky that a second veto was unleashed during Dan's funeral as Ian was gonna end up going home without it. And then lastly, he's lucky that Dan Giesling is the GOAT and got the veto used on him at the final four and then saved Ian in a position where he very well should not have been saved. You're gonna have one shot to break up and this is that shot. So Shane, I'm sorry I have to evict you. What? 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 I can't believe I'm still here. In Big Brother 15, Alyssa Slater got extremely lucky that there was a twist where America would vote for a house guest to get a power and that Alyssa just so happened to be the sister of Rachel Riley, one of the more popular players of recent times. Alyssa likely goes home in week one and in week two without having this power, which she was gifted three times in a row because she was Rachel's sister, and that is insanely lucky. In Big Brother 16, Christine was pretty lucky for sort of just being in the right place at the right time twice in a row to get into two extremely important alliances, the Bomb Squad and the Detonators. How about the Detonators? Oh, I, I like love it! That a lot. I love it! For all of you keeping track at home, that is now two alliances that have just fallen into my lap because I've been in the right room at the right time. That's awesome! Also in Big Brother 16, Derek and Victoria both got really lucky during the reset week. This saved Victoria from being evicted in 5th place, and this opened the door for Derek's guaranteed victory, as now Frankie was evicted at the Final 5 when Frankie very likely could have won the competitions at the Final 4 and Final 3 and not brought Derek to the end. At first I was like, ah, we may not, but what's the worst that can happen? One of us go home right now. Be something really bad. He just made me kind of nervous. So now I don't even know if I want to 
press that button. In Big Brother 17, Steve got lucky by winning not one, but two HOHs through his own mistakes. He tried to throw the double eviction HOH, but failed and accidentally won it, which ended up resulting in Steve solidifying his position within the power structure and setting himself up really nicely for the endgame. And then, once more at the final 4 HOH, he miswrote his tiebreaker answer, which ended up giving him the win, whereas had he wrote the answer he intended on writing, he would have lost the HOH to Johnny Mac and likely been evicted in 4th place. That's some solid competition luck right there. I didn't want that HOH. I'm trying to throw it. I didn't know she's not a caller. In Big Brother 18, Victor got lucky for being gifted two battle back opportunities, but obviously Victor made the most out of it. It wasn't lucky that Victor won the competitions, it was just lucky that he had the opportunity. This not only helped him win America's Favorite House Guest, but also, who knows if him and Nicole end up getting married if they don't have all of that extra time in the house to bond with each other initially. Also in Big Brother 18, Paul got lucky that Victor got two battle back opportunities, as Victor then went on to win HOH each time he came back, evicting somebody that was opposing Paul and Victor, and then Victor would take the bullet in front of Paul. That's pretty lucky for Paul. Also, Paul choosing the correct round trip ticket was pretty lucky, but that's not something that really mattered because they were never evicted, plus they were the person to figure out the code of the secret room first, so it was only fitting that they got it. We're not done with Paul yet, though, because Paul and Big Brother 19 had some extreme luck. Not only was Paul coming back and being the only person guaranteed safety for the night one eviction lucky, but they also got to hand out safety to eight players, which basically meant eight nice new allies, and then immediately afterwards got three more weeks of safety. Three! That's some pretty crazy luck right there. Even I must admit that Josh got insanely lucky that Paul was on this season, as without Paul, Josh likely goes home extremely early on. I'd get into it a bit more now, but I think I'll save that for Big Brother What Ifs 3.0. Congratulations, Josh. Now, in Big Brother 20 and Big Brother 22, Tyler was extremely lucky with veto draw results. He has been chosen through the veto draw 11 out of 14 times. And when you consider that most of these times were when there were over a dozen players left, that leads to an unbelievably low chance that Tyler was picked over and over and over again, but he was. Also in Big Brother 20, Casey got lucky with who was on the jury and how they determined their votes. No disrespect to Casey, but Rockstar was very open about not voting for a white man to win. Fessy voted for Casey because she beat him in a competition that Tyler didn't even participate in. Scotty thought he'd be a hero for voting against the main power player, similar to how the Big Brother 19 jury played out, and Sam thought that Casey needed the money more than Tyler. That's pretty lucky in my eyes. Fess didn't know he was going to be so bitter. He said he voted for Casey because she it was her HOH when he yeah. got out or something like that. Yeah. But Fess doesn't really, Fess never knew what was going on. So, <laughs> like, I get it. He really still doesn't know what was going on. Yeah. Also, also from Big Brother 20, Level 6 as a whole got lucky that Rockstar told Tyler the correct answer in OTEP. This saved either Casey and Angela from going home in week 7, and through the butterfly effect, this also caused Scotty to be evicted the following week. Getting close to the end here, Nicole and Anthony in Big Brother 21 got really lucky by not getting evicted fourth after she was supposed to be going home then. She got lucky that the power structure started turning on Nick and Bella, and then she benefited massively from it, as she likely doesn't win the battle back if she's evicted, and then doesn't win America's Favorite House Guest, and then doesn't get that $40,000 stipend for competing on All Stars, as she likely doesn't get the call back then. And now, in Big Brother 23, I think that Xavier was lucky for a plethora of reasons. There's a ton of things that just worked out in Xavier's favor without his input, like being granted safety throughout basically the entirety of the pre-jury due to Christian's ability to win competitions, everyone constantly saying that Xavier was going to be a threat to win, which eventually just manifested itself into being true, and then everyone at the Final Four wanting to take Xavier to the end for absolutely whack reasons. Kylan wanting to because he wanted to sit next to the best player at the end, Aza wanting to because Big D was mean to her and she didn't want to reward his behavior, and Big D wanting to for the fear that he would lose next to a woman at the final two. It was just wild, but pretty entertaining to see all of this gold fall right into Xavier's lap. He was pretty lucky. I don't know if I would feel comfortable with X being in third, mm -hmm. with the work that he's done. Mm -hmm. At this time, if I won, 
I think I would take him. And I know I just said lastly, but lastly, lastly, I want to have an overall mention for Casey, Jackson, Cody, and Xavier as a general lucky group. Not to take away from these players, but the new pattern of uncharacteristically physical endgame comps without a doubt helped all four of these players achieve their victories. It's no coincidence that since the endgame competitions became much more physical starting in Big Brother 20, the four winners since then are also the four winners with the highest number of competition wins, with Jackson and Cody at eight wins, Casey at seven, and Xavier with six. And there we go. Having luck is not something that detracts too much from your winning game. As you can see, I have basically all of the top winners on this list, and I'm sure that they would be the first to tell you that there is a lot of luck involved in winning Big Brother. It's just the name of the game. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Thank you so much for watching, and a special thank you to my YouTube members who continue to support me even through this boring offseason. If you're new here, consider subscribing, and as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. You think he's just back there talking to the live feeds? Hmm? You think he's still just back there talking to the live feeds? Maybe, yeah.